I love to live here. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. Uh, I really like it. Mm. I really can't think of myself living elsewhere. I, I love fiction about Mars. Have you always been into space? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> um, there's uh, uh, this novel. Well, it's uh, the first book in a in a series. Uh, I started writing this stuff um, only a few years ago. Uh, I'm a biologist and something completely different. <laughs> I used to work at university a, a long time ago. <laughs> uh, it was uh, 2004 when I left uh, my work at university, my job at university. And uh, um, uh, um, of course, I've always uh, liked uh, writing. I've always uh, liked uh, um, the space, the space exploration, and uh, things about that. And uh, um, um, this, um, and I was always uh, uh, charmed by Mars. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, and so, well, um, this story. Uh, was uh, uh, thought con conceived, in, I think, I think in, in a few days at the beginning, uh, just because I was looking for something to write, something short. It was supposed to be short, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, instead <laughs> it turned out to be very long. <laughs> uh, yes, and. Uh, um, I was uh, thinking about a story set on Mars. Uh, it was supposed to be a short story at the beginning, then it became a novella. And this uh, the, this first book, uh, the one I, I was offering is, is this novella. But then I wrote two more novels and more and more. <laughs> what, what was the first one called? Uh, the first one is called Red Desert Point of No Return. Oh, okay. uh, Red Desert is the name of the series too. Yeah, and um, uh, Red Dennis in general, the series uh, is a, a hard science fiction series set mainly on Mars in the near future, uh, say like 50 years in the future, more or less. <laughs> From where we and, are right uh, now. Uh, From yeah, where um, we are right now. <laughs> and um, it is the story of uh, a woman uh, called uh, Anna Persson. She's uh, Swedish. Uh, she's an, an exobiologist, and uh, she's a member of uh, um, a Mars colonization mission. And uh, but we met uh, we, we meet her uh, after um, more than one thousand days that she is on Mars. And, um, and we meet her while she's leaving, uh, when she's leaving um, the, the, hab the habitat the called um, Station Alpha, and secretly uh, um, at dawn, nobody knows she's, she's leaving. And uh, uh, she, she enters uh, the Martian desert with, uh, with a rover, uh, with uh, oxygen and uh, for only 50 hours. Uh, so she can go very far, <laughs> um, but we don't know uh, why she's doing so. Uh, maybe she's escaping, or maybe she's looking for something, or maybe she's about to commit suicide. We don't know. Mm, yeah. she's, <laughs> she's very mysterious, and uh, we follow her in, in this journey. Uh, and during two days, more or less, uh, well, during which she uh, reveals to us what brought her to Mars. Uh, so there are a lot of flashbacks uh, from her past life, and uh, uh, including the fact that uh, she left behind her partner um, called Jan. Uh, she also tells us uh, that um, two out of the five members of the mission of uh, are, are died. We don't know uh, what happened exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> Something bad must be uh, must have happened uh, in the station Alpha, and uh, and 
I can't say too much because I don't want to spoil the, the book. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but this this first book, which is a which is a novel, as I said, um, ends with her finding something, finding something, but I can't say what. Uh, uh, actually, we do not really understand exactly what she, she finds at the end. We will find out more in the following books. <laughs> well, that's interesting. So the book is kind of a science fiction slash fantasy book um science fiction hard science fiction mostly less mostly. yes but, okay <laughs> not, not, not a lot of fantasy at all <laughs> not fantasy at all okay so it's just hardcore science i i like that a lot and um but that's not your first book though are you the author of the mentor too yes okay and that's, a, that's actually a series right uh, it's a thriller, a crime thriller, something completely different. <laughs> something completely different, but that actually has quite a big following, doesn't it? Um, well, uh, it was it was uh, quite uh, a success uh, when it was published uh, uh, three years ago uh, in uh, published in English. The book, of, of course, the original book was in Italian, just like. Just like the, the series because I'm Italian, mm -hmm. and uh, it was published in, in English. Uh, the mentor was published in English in uh, 2015 in uh, November, mm -hmm. and it was published by Amazon Crossing, which is an imprint of Amazon Publishing. And uh, it's an indie publishing. It's an indie published book. Uh, what? <laughs> it, it, it's independently published. You the did it all on your own. The, the origin of uh, the original books, uh, yes, are all uh, independent published. Uh, the only exception is this English version of the mantle, but uh, it, it is now uh, un, um, it's not published anymore. I mean, the the book does not exist anymore because I got back my rights, uh, and now I will republish it. I don't I don't really know if it will be independently published or, or uh, with another um, publisher. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the mentor was published three years ago, and uh, it, it went very it went very well. But uh, it it it, it reached uh, about two uh, two hundred thousand readers around the world. So it's it's a good number, I think. Yeah, two hundred thousand is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but then uh, I we didn't uh, I didn't um, when went on with the with the Amazon publishing because they weren't interested in publishing the other two books in the, the trilogy, so I, I asked my rights back. <laughs> so th this way I can republish it and publish the other two books. <laughs> so. Did you did they push your novel when when you got onto Amazon? Do you think that's what happened to kind of cascade it into its popularity or? Had you set up a marketing plan? Uh, they they push they push it they push it a lot at the beginning. Uh, it was uh, selected for a, a special promotion. Uh, they paid me for this for my, putting me in this uh, promotion, and it went very well thanks to, uh, to this. But that then after the the first month, like um, publisher uh, normally do. Uh, they uh, left it behind, you know. <laughs> they yeah. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, yeah, it's it, it's the same with all publishers in the end because they have so many books. So yeah, you know, uh, they um, push it at the beginning and then uh, yeah, they stop. <laughs> so <laughs> that's interesting. What what was your biggest takeaway from from the experience? Um, it wasn't. Uh, it was interesting. Well, it was. Uh, uh, it was good and mo money money wise it was very good <laughs> uh, except for this it was interesting because it was my first experience with a publisher and uh, yeah uh, it was interesting but uh, uh, there were so many some uh, many bad points about it uh, uh, there were problems about the translation first of all the book was translated by uh, a quite good translator actually but uh, the book uh, is set in London and it was translated in American English. So that was a problem with the readers. You know? Oh, interesting. <laughs> so like <laughs> the spellings were slightly off and like different words were used for, for this. Yeah, yeah, it's different thing. slang, different there was there were also some 
factual er uh, mistakes um, in the story also because uh, the, the translator didn't know the places so uh, you know and uh, this, this was a problem and when i it happened to, to i happened to read the book uh, this translation oh my god it was it was <laughs> very strange. Uh, this is one of the reasons I, I asked to get the rights back so that it could, uh, I could uh, translate it again uh -huh. in the right English, but also um, giving the right information to, to, the, re to the readers, you know. So it was, uh, um, I've mixed, mixed the um, thoughts about this experience. Uh, uh, I, I had um, the chance to work with the um, interesting people for sure by the end of the, the feeling they were too too busy for me you know <laughs> yeah i mean I, I bet they had a lot of they were publishing a lot of authors experimenting with this something yeah uh, i've always been curious about an author whose work has been translated from their their mother tongue to to a second language and it sounds like you were not happy with the experience at all in terms yeah. of what he was producing is that because of I mean, why was that uh, yeah uh, so um, having another person translating your book is great but uh, it would be better if you can uh, cooperate with this person uh, to help uh, you understand uh, what he is translating because uh, uh, even if the translator um, uh, and, uh, has a really good knowledge of Italian. I happened to talk to him at the phone. At the beginning, uh, I wasn't aware he, he was American. <laughs> uh, he was speaking with a, a kind of dialect of Milan. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> with a kind of accent of Milan, it was strange. But uh, uh, even if he, he speaks a very good Italian, uh, um, he missed a lot of uh, you know, uh, point uh, a little expect of languages that that you you don't know if it isn't your native language, you know. Uh, so it would be better if uh, we could cooperate during translation, but it, it it wasn't possible. There was no time for this because it, it everything was in a hurry. And so now uh, I. Uh, I mean, you I talk just... to people like who are publishing novels, and they talk about how it takes such a long time from the acceptance to the actual publication but they they wanted to slam through this translation yeah it's uh, it took a lot, a lot of time because i signed the contract at uh, november to uh, 2014 and the book was published one year later but uh, I, as i understood they gave him the translator just a few months to translate, while uh, other uh, other part of the process la process like uh, the, the audiobook uh, took eight months to 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 for, for, for producing it. Uh, so it was um, strange because I um, I think uh, the translation is more important than the audiobook. But <laughs> what can I say? It is uh, they they do that is the way they, it works. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So well, that was it was a pity, I think, because uh, if the transition uh, were um, were a better one, and I would probably have a better result, result with this book. Also, there was a problem with the uh, the gen, because the book is a crime thriller. By the but they uh, pushed it as a mystery. That was a mistake, mm, because uh, yes, there is. Uh, a detective, there is um, there are murders, etc. But this is not the point of the story because the, the story is about this detective and, uh, and about the fact that he suspects that uh, the killer, a serial killer, is a person he, he loves. And uh, the whole story is not about finding the killer and arresting him uh, or, or uh, whatever. But uh, to uh, it's it's a struggle of the, the main character who doesn't want to believe uh, this person is the killer, so it he tries to find another person, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it does it doesn't end, ends up with uh, uh, an arrest or something like this. Uh, in fact, it is just the first book in the trilogy. The story continues in two more books, so it was a, a mistake, and because um, of course people uh, reading mysteries. Uh, maybe would like it, but I was missing a lot of people that uh, would rather read a, a crime thriller, not a mystery. Mm -hmm. 
It's interesting because, I mean, people who read these type of books, they read them fast. Like my mom yeah. reads this stuff and she just will rip through a novel quickly. <sighs> like she wouldn't yeah, stop yeah. to enjoy it or anything, just like constantly like turning these things over. Um, <sighs> did you did you read this type of stuff before? I mean, what were you, I mean, because you were a biologist, you're a scientist. So, I mean, yeah. were you reading thrillers and mysteries and I read everything. I read everything. everything. <laughs> I'm a, a big reader. I read uh, I read uh, about uh, 50 or more books um, a year. And uh, um, I like um, crime thrillers, uh, science fiction, historical novels, whatever. <laughs> so that's no limit. <laughs> but the cool thing is you can read outside your language as well. Do you tend to read in English? Yeah. I read. I can read uh, uh, um, in English, in uh, in French, and in German. Uh, as well as Italian. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. So it, it's interesting because uh, um, reading the books in another language makes you think in another language and make you feel it in another language. It's completely different. It's great. <laughs> It's a problem because I also write in my language. So when I'm writing, I don't have to read book in other languages because it's uh, it's complicated to write in my language. Then. Yeah, I've heard that. Like your your brain will get confused if you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that word it comes to me in, in English, but not. I want the Italian word. <laughs> yeah, you want the Italian word. Um, are you are you in the process of writing right now? Are you yes, writing I'm, well? I'm, I'm writing a book. Um, so uh, I mentioned the Red Desert uh, series. It, this uh, Red Desert series is the, the first part in a bigger saga called Aurora. And I, I'm currently uh, writing the fourth part of this saga. So I'm, I'm quite, uh, uh, I, 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 bought, I published uh, the second, third also books in this saga. And, that's, and now I'm writing the, the fourth part, which is a science fiction, a hard science fiction novel, of course. It is uh, um, titled Serious Free Falling. Free Falling is the title. Serious uh -huh. is the name of a um, uh, space station. And, uh, and um, the story is uh, partly set in this space station uh, orbiting Earth and uh, a party on Earth. And uh, it continues uh, uh, the story of uh, some of the main characters in the Red Desert series. And there will be, there will be another book then, the final one of the saga, which uh, will be published in 2020. Uh, and it will be called uh, Aurora, Aurora, uh, which is the name of a starship. Um, uh, I can explain more because uh, mm -hmm. I said the Red Desert is uh, the first part, okay, it's set to Mars. Then there is a second part, which is called uh, the Isle of Gaia, uh, which is uh, set on Earth, completely on Earth. And it's set um, one century in the future from now. So it's very uh, <laughs> and in the future. Then there is Ophir. Ophir, uh, subtitle is called uh, uh, Living Code. Uh, and uh, uh, it is set again uh, some, sev some years after Rajasa. So the, the story is not chronological. It's mixed in time, you know, and you have yeah. to put the, the piece together. And the book I'm writing now, it's set between Ophir and the Isle of Gaia. <laughs> so it's complicated. <laughs> but if you read them, you, you will understand. <laughs> Do you um do you think that you'll ever go back to mystery thrillers as a as a genre, or are you now a science fiction author? Oh uh, uh, well, I wrote uh, beside the, um, the the detective Eric show the trilogy. Uh, I wrote another uh, thriller, an action thriller called Kindred Intentions. It is also available in English. In English. And uh, I will probably go back to thriller in the future. The problem is uh, that uh, um, science fiction sells better in Italian, uh, for me at oh, least, interesting. Uh, because uh, uh, I have um, uh, good readership here in Italy. And uh, so uh, uh, why my thrillers uh, uh, sold less, except the mantle, the others sold very, very few, not a lot of copies, not as much as my science fiction novels. So 
I think I will do both. I don't know. I will decide um, <laughs> in the future. I don't want to make too, too many plans. I have ideas for about uh, 10, 12 more books in both genres, but uh, I don't know. Well, I, I also wrote. Uh, I also wrote, it was a fan fiction actually, uh, and an action fantasy, something like this. And I was uh, thinking about writing uh, an original book on the same, um, of the same genre, uh, in, inspired from that fan fiction, but without any connection from the original work, but which was actually uh, the mummy, you know, uh, the mummy uh, universal monster. <laughs> well, the, the mummy as an idea is, I mean, you could use that, right? It doesn't have to be connected to the movies. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was, um, I was a big fan of uh, the movie by Stephen Sommers in 1999. Uh, so that's why I wrote that the fan fiction at the time, but I created some original characters. So I was thinking to use these characters in a, in a different original book, uh, which uh, has nothing to do with the, uh, with the mummy. And so it would be a kind of action fantasy adventure, but with a lot of irony, uh, just like the mummy, uh, that, that movie of the mummy, of course, but without uh, a mummy, <laughs> Maybe not that mummy. mummy, not that mummy, not, not, not that mummy, mummy, a different one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, did you like the uh, the Tom Cruise movie, the one that came out? I think it was last year or the year before. I don't, didn't like it very much. <laughs> Maybe you don't like it. Nobody uh, liked it, huh? <laughs> it was I don't know. Uh, so mm, I, I I can't find a word. Uh, you know, um, the the boom, the all the, the movie that all oh, the yes. I say all because it, uh, it was a long time ago, but the movie by Somers was uh, ironic. It was supposed to be ironic. This one uh, was too much dramatic and it, it, it appeared just ridiculous. Uh, I don't know <laughs> I, I, I can uh, say that. Uh, though I, I, there are some connection I, I understood, but I don't know if it will, there will be, they will be developed in the future because I don't think it, will, it went very well uh, in the box office. I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, irony is such a great way to describe the Brandon Fraser mummy movies, like kind of yes. tongue in cheek and fun, and they're not taking itself too seriously. And, yes, and I like that. Yeah, like that was yeah. that's why they were kind of popular, wasn't that? That's why they were kind of successful. They had a different kind of atmosphere to them. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Do you take the subject seriously, the the Mars books, the 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 um the Red Desert, or or is it an opportunity for you to kind of use irony as a as a tool in the writing? Uh, what exactly do you mean? <laughs> um, I, I guess I'm, I'm asking how. I mean, how do you treat Mars in your in your books? Uh, Mars. Oh well, <laughs> uh, very seriously. Mars is like uh, a character in my book. Uh, I can't explain exactly why because it would be a spoiler. But uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me uh, let me ask you this. You said um, I mean, if it's not, I might have misunderstood you. Which, uh, if I did, I apologize. No, no but problem. It kind of sounds like your main character experiences some kind of connection to life on Mars. Yeah. 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 Okay. Something like this. Yes, uh, it will be. It's not in the first book, but it will be. Uh, you find out about it in the other books of the series. Yes, it's uh, like a, like a reincarnation. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not a, not so spiritual. <laughs> well, it's not because that that's where I was aiming to the yeah, spiritual it's, it's nature. Yeah, it's more scientific that. stuff, more DNA stuff. You know. <laughs> oh, interesting. Saying. So her DNA is on. <laughs> Her DNA is on Mars, and she feels a connection. Ah, uh, uh, yes, <laughs> some DNA, oh, very old DNA. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yes, Would you? <laughs> can you get into more details about that without oh. spoiling anything? Because I'd love to hear uh, more. And especially being related. a biologist, I imagine this is like your forte. Yeah, yeah. it's it was uh, it's a, it's related to water. <laughs> water. Uh, oh, water. Oh, yes. Uh, it, I had that, this idea even a, lot, a long time before uh, there was a, a, this talking about water in Mars, you know, um, the announcement that NASA did the 
five years ago about this water in the surface of Mars, even if, but now they say, oh no, we, we were wrong. It is, it wasn't exactly, it isn't exactly what it was. Anyway, yeah, I suppose there was water underground and which is probable, we don't know, which is likely. It's likely, and, right? I think, yeah. I think as then, far as I know, it's like really likely, like 99% uh, yes. verified at this point. Yeah, and uh, that, that something, is uh, entrapped in this water something um, trapped up, yeah yeah microorganism DNA stuff you know <laughs> and uh, the problem is when uh, humans get in, in getting in, in contact with this water and uh, yeah I can't say more I'm afraid uh, <laughs> because this uh, this thing uh, in the water uh, it isn't exactly it isn't no bad no good uh, I, it's not like uh, you know a horror or of, you know the movie life if you know that no not something like this it's just something that uh, is trying to uh, it, it, it's trapped I want to get out I want to come back home uh, <laughs> a book of this uh, a book the, the last book in, in the series is called back home for this this reason uh, but it's not like it e. yeah <laughs> not falling home <laughs> <laughs> it's more subtle it's more uh, biological thing uh, and it's about and it's it's dna but it's not completely natural it's more artificial uh, it's a mix it, i know i can't say that <laughs> Um, well, a, you have fun writing these. Obviously, you really enjoy the concepts. I write. I, I really have fun writing stories <laughs> and mixing them up. Uh, I'm currently writing uh, this this part in the saga. And again, there is uh, this uh, this DNA. I call it the code. The, the word is the code. And uh, it is this 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 code coming up and making a lot of mess <laughs> with people. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to say it without spoiling books. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, we're getting into the subject of alien life, right? In terms of what's on Mars, what's in the soil, what's this code? Um, <laughs> how do you how do you feel about aliens? Uh, something aliens, yes, uh, but uh, uh, yes, because the code, of course, is not uh, original uh, originally from Mars. It, it came from somewhere else a long, yeah. very long time ago. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I, I would love to tell you everything, but I can't. <laughs> so that that's a that's a fascinating um, kind of trope of science fiction, right? Like something bigger seeded the the universe with uh, with life, kind of mirroring itself, right? Uh, um, well. Um, uh, I suppose that somewhere uh, very far, very, very, very far from here, the, the reason, uh, there is there was at least a billion years ago life, which is possible, an advanced life uh, that uh, somehow managed to come to the, this uh, the system. But it was so far away in the past that there is not no trace about it of it at all except this dna uh it's it's particular story uh, of this uh, specific dna because the it's not exactly an alien it's just a dna which isn't exactly life life in a way we mean it um an organism it's a, a part of an organ of, a, of, a, the, of a dna which includes information uh, which has um genetical memory and uh, it's like uh, um, something that uh, can uh, express this genetical memory and uh, give a and, uh, give a combination with this uh, dna from the past no i can't explain it without spoiling it i'm sorry <laughs> oh it's okay um i was curious though um you said that italians are definitely into science fiction yeah um, would no, you exactly. recommend like English uh, English people who authors who write in English translate their work and try to publish it in, in Italian? Oh well, uh, this is not completely true. I I I, I, I said that um, my case uh, 
uh, science fiction, science world, and thriller. Uh, there, there is not a big, uh, a la very large audience of science fiction readers in Italy. Uh, science fiction is still a niche uh, uh, genre. But uh -huh. this is, this is uh, uh, an advantage for an um, uh, independent author like me, uh, because um, you are not, uh, you, we are not too many. Uh, 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 science fiction authors uh, in Italy are not too many. There aren't so many books, so uh, we have uh, a real chance to be to be read. And uh, it was uh, particularly true uh, at uh, in 2012 when I uh, originally published this this book. Um, it was the first year with the Kindle in Italy, and there weren't many books books at all. And, uh, and the first readers uh, in, uh, of, of Kindle, using Kindle, were uh, people who like uh, technology. And so most of them uh, were science fiction readers. So it helped at that time to, to me to gain a readership, a quite large readership at the beginning, and I'm still having this readership. Uh, for an, an, a new out author now, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's more difficult to get uh, this, uh, this audience. Mm. And, and as for translation, um, uh, it's always, uh, you know, uh, a translated book uh, um, is interesting for Italian because Italians are quite, as, uh, you know, quite reward. We, we like something coming from abroad. Normally, actually, uh, there are people in Italy that use an, um, a pen name in English, uh, which is crazy, uh, but they do, uh, just because uh, people, uh, readers, uh, think it's uh, something coming from abroad, and so if it is translated into Italian, it may be something something good, something uh, so uh, interesting, so, so successful, so oh, good that it was translated. <laughs> <laughs> So they, turn, so they take, they, they turn, they they take a pen name that's like an American or English yeah. name, and they, they translate their a story. A lot of me. people do that. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Or I don't know. It's, uh, I don't understand it completely, but uh, I, I see the marketing side of it. Yes. <laughs> Who are some of the big Italian science fiction authors right now? Are there anybody that you would like say? is the uh, king of the Italian science fiction uh, <laughs> or um, queen for that matter. I don't, I don't mean to generalize the gender. Yeah, um, well, uh, I, I, I found, well, <laughs> uh, there is one of them which is really uh, quite uh, famous uh, and who is published by a big, or a big uh, publishing company, publisher, uh, whose name is uh, Dario Tonani. Uh, he is also a friend of mine. <laughs> we, we have everybody um, who reads uh, science fiction in Italy become, become, becomes friend because uh, we are so few. That <laughs> we are so friends. Cool. <laughs> And uh, he's maybe the more, most famous at the moment, uh, but there are, there are others. Um, uh, but uh, maybe he's uh, one of the few who is published by, big, by a big uh, publisher. Uh, I think uh, this, this one is Dario Tonani. I know may, uh, more names, but I cannot recommend them because I haven't read the, the books. But uh, I read the books by Dario. They are quite good. While they are a completely, a completely different sensation than mine, uh, because uh, it's, it's very soft, not hard sense fiction. Why very soft sense fiction? It's, uh, I cannot really. I cannot even explain this because one of his books, for instance, uh, there are big cartoons, uh, living cartoons. <laughs> don't ask me how they become alive, I don't know. In another book, uh, um, in his uh, uh, Mondo Nove, World, World Nine series, um, is set in a, in a planet. Uh, where uh, we have sentient uh, ships uh, which doesn't go to, in, doesn't travel on, uh, on water but on sand it's quite difficult to explain it's more similar to fantasy than science fiction but it's something in the middle it's very very mixed uh, it's very very original 
uh, but he, he writes very well. His, his writing is very good. His name is Dario Tulani. Tulani with T O N A N I. <laughs> okay. De Dario. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I can't spell, obviously, because I can't find it. <laughs> but I think there is one a short story by him uh, in English, which is part of his, uh, this saga, uh, a short one. Maybe you can find it somewhere uh, if you look at it at Amazon. <laughs> well, I mean, how do you spell his first name? Is it D-A-R-O? Uh, yes. <laughs> and it's called O M A N I. A N I, yes. <laughs> really? Okay, well, nothing's popping up. I will, I will, I will write it to, to you. Perfect. <laughs> something. It's, it's me and my and my American. That's the unfortunate thing. I mean, uh, there's lots of unfortunate things about being an American right now, but one of those is that uh, we don't get an opportunity to speak a lot of languages. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you're God. You're in like the perfect location to just get flooded with people from all over the world, right? I mean, yes. Well, also we have uh, uh, so many countries nearby, so we have. It's normal that we try to learn another language. Uh, you know, uh, I'm Sardinia. Uh, north of Sardinia is uh, Corsica, which is from, which is French. <laughs> it's France. It's part of France. Um, then uh, everybody mm, must learn English at school because it's it's so. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have uh, Germany and Austria, which which are very close. So um, you 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 are uh, pushed to to learn more languages uh, when you travel. And uh, um, Besides, uh, um, I like uh, foreign languages. I like to understand people in other languages. Uh, also, um, I must say that uh, not, uh, not all Italian, uh, Italians uh, learn uh, foreign languages, uh, except a little English, of course, uh, because um, uh, we, have, uh, we are very, uh, we have a, strong bond with our language uh, still we have it strong so bond. yeah yeah, yeah. So language it... what is a bella linga right it's the the beautiful language it's magnificent <laughs> the way it sounds spoken by a native speaker when i was there oh, it was so wonderful um but english was a language that i could use and whether it was somebody who spoke fluently or like had one or two words i could get by which i really enjoyed <laughs> yeah <laughs> What is, um, so you're writing now and yeah. you're going to continue writing at least one more book in each series, if I understood you correctly. Uh, yes, one more after this one. Yeah, I hope to uh, publish this one in November and uh, then I will start working on the next one, which will be published in 2020. Yes. Is this is this pretty much what you're going to be writing from now on, or are you waiting for inspiration, or are you one of those writers that are con constantly got a backlog of stuff that you need to finish? Yeah, uh, I I don't believe in inspiration. <laughs> I mean, uh, you have to sit down and time to to write uh, your your words, yeah. and uh, yeah, if you if you wait uh, for inspiration, it never comes. And uh, I have uh, I am writing this book. I'm uh, uh, one third in in, in, the, in the first draft. Uh, I have to work hard because I'm, I, I, bec uh, I've, I've fallen a bit behind. And uh, but I uh, also I'm also working on other stuff. Uh, previously, I was as I told you, I was uh, translating again the mental, and uh, I want to translate the other two books in uh, in the series into English. And now I'm, I'm translating them uh, by myself and working with the mother tongue author and, uh, and the proofreader to uh, have it, the language fix it. And uh, also, I'm also, I was also writing 
uh, a book about self-publishing, but I stopped it for a moment, paused it for a moment, I will continue later because I have this, this book to write. Uh, and moreover, I have to translate an, uh, a book from uh, uh, from this, this time from English into Italian for for um, a book by um, a British author, a uh, science fiction book. Um, I already translated the, uh, the first one in his series uh, years ago. His name is Richard J. Galloway. And uh, uh, now I'm translating the second one, which is uh, divided in, uh, in four parts. I'm, I'm do, I have to do the second part now. Uh, in the next month when I have time. And now I'm writing, so I have no time for any other things. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Don't wait for inspiration. Write every single day on a project that needs to be finished. I mean, that's yeah. that's basically how I've I've turned into. <laughs> I mean, inspiration is great, right? I mean, when you get that idea, but it never ends up yeah. the same way at the end of the day. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> never. I, I take notes of, of an idea. So I'm, I've, I've so many uh, sheets around the uh, you know, the desk written uh, with a pen. It's in an awful uh, my awful writing <laughs> and writing. And uh, oh, every, and you now, start out with a pen and paper. <laughs> Yeah, I write, no, I write uh, only there, no, um, oh, wow. some ideas. So I take them, I put them uh, beside my computer when I, I really write the scene, like the scene, I write it at the computer, of course. <laughs> but I need to write down every, every every single idea that comes up in my mind because it may be useful more, sooner or later. It's, uh, it's a continuous, a, the period in which I write, uh, I'm, I'm working, uh, 21 hours a day, practically, even when I sleep, wow. uh, I'm dreaming, <laughs> I dream about, I, I wake up, oh, oh, an idea, I have to write it. <laughs> it's, uh, especially when I'm in my bed, I'm trying to sleep, no, oh, I had an idea, I have to write before I forget. Uh, and so I'm, now that I am one third in the, in the, in the first draft, I have uh, this uh, bundle of sheets, a written sheet, I have to make some order on them to write the second part because yeah. it's, it's a thing that I just have to elaborate it, develop it, and so on. <laughs> How, what's your research look like? I mean, does that take a lot of time prior to writing the book or are you doing it consecutively? What? Or at so, the same time? Uh, are you... No, I, are you doing uh, your research at the same time as you're writing the book, or are you doing uh, uh, more or less? Yes. Uh, in, well, I tend to write about uh, um, uh, topics I already uh, know because uh, I, I always uh, write. I always write something about space related, uh, Mars related, and uh, so on, and space exploration related. So I already have the knowledge, but sometimes I have to, to search for the details. So I'm researching. In, like um, in, in right in the middle of writing, you know, I'm writing a scene. I need an information. I stop. I go to Google, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it. <laughs> and I start reading something. Or well, for instance, um, but not only. I also uh, um, choose my well, the books that I'm reading at the time uh, because uh, they must be related to what I'm writing. For instance, in this book, there are some. Uh, some scene, scenes that are set in Iceland. So I took this occasion to read uh, a couple of books uh, set in Iceland to get the mood of the place, uh, but also to get some information, uh, some, you know, uh, about people, uh, about uh, uh, what is typical of the place, just to get these uh, little tidbits of information in the story to make it more realistic. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I get that. Um, yeah, so uh, this is, I really appreciate you coming on my show and talking <laughs> with me about your, your career, your writing, your, your, your hopes for the future. It's, it's really cool getting to know who you are and seeing the work that you have out there in the world right now and, and the efforts that you put into it because, man, the idea that you're writing in Italian and then translating it in English for me to enjoy is just really miraculous. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> um, I like to finish up these podcasts with three questions, and I think the yeah. first one you've already kind of answered for me. I mean, I would. Um, what what kind of advice would you give to somebody struggling to produce works of art like you've produced? Oh, <laughs> well, it's it's not easy because uh, each people has a different way to approach 
uh, writing. Uh, I must say that uh, they have to yeah, sit and write until it is finished. The first time is really, really, really uh, difficult. But once you, you made it once, then it becomes easier. You have to set some goals, some deadlines, maybe not too, too strict, but you have to put them because otherwise you tend to uh, postpone, you tend to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> say I'll do that tomorrow, I have no time. No, you have to dedicate uh, some time every day, not every day maybe, but when you decide today I, I'm writing, you write it, your agenda, uh, today I'm going to write, I have to write, even if it's just half a page. And uh, yes, uh, you have to uh, listen to the characters uh, <laughs> because uh, they, they know the story better than you. Uh, it's something, uh, it's like magic, you know. Uh, you think you are in control of the story and you are to a certain extent, but not completely. Sometimes the things come up and you have to take them uh, and use them and mix them up. And uh, you understand that the story is like the story is there somewhere and you are discovering it, not yeah. just creating it. I love that so much. I feel like it's like a, um, a Leonardo da Vinci, you know, just carving. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. little bits of uh, Michelangelo, you know, carving like little tiny slivers out of the stone and finding what's actually there. That's my favorite part. Um, my for me, the for, you know, sitting down and writing the first draft is always the easiest part, and then going back through and making myself edit it. Oh, it's it, agony. It's opposite. It's opposite for me. I hate writing the first draft. I completely hate it. But once it is uh, finished, ah, uh, okay, the story is there. It cannot escape. I just have to make it better. <laughs> you just have to polish it up. Yeah, I, I get you because I mean, once you're actually, I just finished a story today that oh. I was I was at complete agony over for the last week. <laughs> um, it just feels so good to finish a draft. Oh, yeah. you know I mean? <laughs> like, oh, okay, I can write after all. And then it's, it's you know, now that yeah, project's done. Yeah. I work on the yeah. next one. I'm right back to feeling like crap about myself. <laughs> well, people ask me, what do you like most of writing? And I say, not, I don't like writing. I like when I have written, written it is done. <laughs> I write. I like to write. I like to read what I have written, <laughs> not what, not writing it. it. <laughs> yeah, the best this, the best part of writing is the past tense verb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have written. I have written stuff. That means it's done. No. You don't have to go back and do anything else to it. Yeah, the work is finished. <laughs> <laughs> um, my my second question might be a difficult one for people who speak well, English or any language besides Italian, oh. but I am curious. Um, what are you reading right now? What is on your Kindle? What is on your night table? Um, uh, now I'm reading uh, a book by Richard Matheson, Other Kingdoms. Uh, one of the of his latest books. Um, yes, I'm reading the only this one at this moment. Uh, it's quite a strange book because uh, um, it tells the story of this uh, of this um, young uh, young boy. He's 18. 18. Uh, and this boy is uh, was born at the beginning of the previous century, so he is 18 in the 19. 18. And uh, this, this boy uh, was wounded during the, the World, uh, World War I, and uh, now he, he went to, uh, to England uh, to find the place where uh, one of the other soldiers who was his friend and who died during the war uh, was, uh, was, was, was living. And in this place, this is a very strange place called Gatford, um, probably it doesn't exist, uh, where there are, uh, you know, uh, strange creatures. It's, it's about fantasy. Mm. You know, Madison wrote books that were uh, fantasy or science fiction, not really, not exactly in a, in a specific genre. It's very, really, very really strange. There is a witch. Uh, I don't know. I, I, it's funny. I'm curious to know, to see where it will, uh, it will go, well, <laughs> what the, the, the author wants to tell us. Uh, it's an interesting book, yes. I, I, I love Richard Madison in general. Where do, you, um, where do you go to get your books? Well, I mean, because I mean, obviously, you read a lot. So, I mean, where are you getting your, <laughs> where are you getting the titles to read? 
Oh, many places. Well, I get most of my books in uh, in the shops where they uh, used books are, uh, are are sold. Yeah, oh, <laughs> they are uh, they are quite cheap. But this is not the only point because I can find uh, old books that are really impossible to find in normal uh, in normal bookstores or or even in. Uh, on Amazon, uh, or even on, because there aren't uh, so many books. Uh, um, yeah, there are a lot of big books on Amazon, of course, and um, most of them are in English, and I, I can read them in English. But uh, I, I love, uh, you know, when you are you go in a place uh, to a place and look around those many books, and you find this one, and it's like uh, the book is calling you. Oh, read me, read me. <laughs> yeah. And I love when this book is an old one. So the book that someone else has written, you know, as a reader. Sorry, uh, it's particular. Well, also the fact that you buy uh, eight books and spend ten euros, it's it's fine. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Right. I mean, but you're reading, you're not reading your contemporaries, or are you you're reading the guys that have already come and gone, had their careers, uh, written their stories, and moved, well, whatever what? happens, no, happens. No, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> you lost Well, me. I mean, <laughs> like, your, your books are on Amazon, and the used yes. books really aren't on Amazon, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Well, I also I also buy books um, from my Kindle, of course. Uh, I go to bookstores. There are different sources. I um, it, the point is I don't look for books. They they, they look find for you. Them. Yeah, they I love that. That's really, that's really beautiful. <laughs> uh, my my last question is: Where do you want people to go to interact with you on the internet? What? Oh, uh -huh. Where can we find you on the World Wide Web? Oh yes. <laughs> 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 well, uh, you can find me in my uh, my website. Uh, my website is uh, www.anakina.eu. Anakina is like uh, the female version of Anakin's co-worker. <laughs> okay, and I'll make sure that I, I'll make sure that's in the uh, the notes of the show along with your Twitter. And if there's anything else that we missed in the conversation that you think people should know about, um, shoot me an email with it. It'd be really cool. But otherwise, um, you're on Amazon. All of your books are on Amazon. Yes, Amazon, I'm on Amazon, Amazon, or Kobo, on Apple, uh, on Nook, every, everywhere. They are everywhere on Google Play. And uh, um, I, there are, uh, at the moment, there are five books of mine available in, uh, as a book. It's a book, uh, the four books from the Red Desert uh, series and the uh, Kindred Intentions, which is an action thriller. And um, the mentor is not there's no more uh, available in uh, as a book, but there is uh, the old version which is uh, available as paperback. But uh, I don't recommend reading by it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I recommend people to wait a little more because the new the new edition will be out. Uh, I hope quite soon. And uh, yeah. Um, you can find me my, on my website, of course, uh, but uh, you can find me on, on Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, and, you know, all the, the social media. And, and yes, also, there is uh, an account for uh, the, the main character of Radeza, Anna Person. Uh, she has uh, her own Twitter account. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes, uh, she's got more followers than me. <laughs> she's got, yeah, ten thousand followers, and she tweets about uh, science inspiration, some space inspiration, science. Uh, oh wait, Mars isn't that how I found you? I think that's how I found you. You tweeted me through her. Yeah, it's possible. I think so. I, think so. Um, yeah. I did have one last question. I I've been meaning to ask you this entire time yes. that we've talked um, yeah. about your covers. Do you do them yourself? Yes, mostly yes. Are those of, are those sketches <laughs> of people, or how are you developing the, the images? Are uh, it's inspired by people, not real people. Uh, I get inspiration from faces I see or from pictures I see, but they are not exactly any of them. It's just a mix, you know. I take I took inspiration from the, the position of the body, you know, position of the face, but the details are invented, <laughs> completely invented. Yes. So they're all and uh, you uh, they're all um uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Your art. <laughs> they're all your art, basically. <laughs> 
Yes, yeah, uh, exactly. I accept the, the first book in Red Desert series. The background uh, was uh, was made by my cousin. Uh, he is a digital artist, and he did for me. Uh, <laughs> it was but the, the lady and the uh, the helmet. That's you. Yeah, 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 yes. The lady is mine. Yes, the helmet. Yes, the helmet. It's quite simple. <laughs> the face. It was more a challenge, but uh, I took inspiration from. Uh, uh, an actress, I can say the name of her, her name, with, why she's not exactly. Uh, um, yeah, I took inspiration from the, the face of uh, um, Caterina Scorsone. She's uh, an actress from Grace Anatomy. Yeah, you maybe know her. Uh, I don't know. Her. <laughs> 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 yeah, the face it can, yeah, it's. A little look, a little, but not exactly because it. I wanted her to look more uh, uh, Middle Eastern because uh, Anna person is Swedish, but she's not completely Swedish. Her mother was Swedish, and her father uh, was uh, from uh, a, a non-specified country in uh, Middle Eastern, but uh, he never met him uh, when she was a child. In fact, he doesn't have his uh, last name, and it's part of the background that we, uh, the reader, will uh, will discover when they read the book <laughs> well um i hope they do and uh, again i thank you so much for being willing to come on the show and talk to me today it really means a lot um if you if you ever in the future want to uh, pop on again don't hesitate to uh drop me okay. an email All okay right? thank you very much <laughs> you have a wonderful rest of your day you too <laughs> Bye bye, bye, -bye.